Hello, it's Sarah, and I am hopefully going to complete our art journal page for August today. Every month or so, I've been creating an art journal page, and they're just, um, I think they're six by nine pieces of paper that I've cut down to just create a small surface, you know, not too big. So we are all the way to August, even though it's September right now. I'm thinking today I want to do something using some Tim Holtz products. Now I know not everyone has these things, so it may be, um, you know, you may not be able to participate with the Tim Holtz stuff, but I know you probably do have a paper line. You can use Prima, you can use anything, even the Michaels brands and stuff usually have a paper pad similar to this, and this is what I'm getting at. I was kind of inspired by this um, ATB block, ATC block that I did. Um, they call them ATBs. And it's just a block of wood. And I stamped on it and just using pretty much one or two stamp sets of Tim's, created this using images, stamping, and his um, inks in the background. So kind of that wasn't my inspiration. I also have the um, tissue wrap. This is called Melange Tissue Wrap. It's like a pre-printed pre um, tissue. You guys all know about this stuff. And so I wanted to use that in my background. And so I'm going to play around with some things. I'm going to pull out my Tim Holtz stuff because I haven't used it in a long time and I just want to uh, play with it. So that's what this month's page is going to be about. So that being said, if you have some, go ahead and pull some papers, pull some items from your stash and think about creating a page with some big images. So we'll probably have some of this has like... Um, book pages. It's kind of a collage, a mishmash of different images from uh, paper, I'm sorry, um, book pages, music, architecture, and some wildlife, so some butterflies. Um, a little bit of French theme going on, but this will just be in the background, so it's just going to be poking through. And um, then I'm going to color on top of it. We're going to put some color. I'll probably use paint. I don't think I'm going to use the inks. Um, and then I'm going to start, and I'll probably dull it down a little bit with gesso. I know, it's odd. But what I was thinking was, I'm really liking this paper line. And I, you'll have to forgive me because, like, look, it could, I have wallflower, but the paper pads have fallen apart because I've pulled out pulled them apart and so I don't have the covers let's see some of it could be from this which is called paper stash um, not sure I have some of that I have oh no it's not called paper stash it's called crowded attic I'm sorry crowded attic wallflower and I think I have one other one. Let's see how the, the covers come off them. So I don't know. Because once I start ripping pages out, I don't know what... Con oh, this is the back of one. I don't know which one it was. This looks like it's not... This doesn't look like it's crowded attic. It looks a little different. Anyway, I mean, I've gotten several of his paper pads over the years, and I don't use them, so that's what I'm going to do. But what I like about it is there's big versions, so this is the biggest, right? Here's the big whole page, but then here it is in a fourth of the size, right? So here's a big 45, here's a fourth of the size 45, and then it even goes down like, so the same thing with this page. Here's an ATC size almost of this page. So I think I'm going to pull different size pieces from, from different um, pages. So I'm going to go through here. I want some color and some 
monotone. So like, I like, like, look, here's the big page and here's the fourth of a size page. So I may use, because our page is only going to be this big, I got to cut a piece, but it's only going to be this big. I'm going to do my background first, and then I'm going to find some paints. So maybe I'll just use the big parcel post. I'm going to cut that out, and I'll use the smaller flowers. We'll see. I don't know what I'm going to use. There are some big butterflies, and then I could probably find that in the much smaller size. I have big birds. So I just went through and looked, and then there's these pieces, which are just like strips. So I could cut one of them and use it as a border. This doesn't go with this paper line. I like these men, but I think they're a little too big. So I'm just going to cut bits and pieces that I like. Like So here's a whole page of butterflies, just a bunch of butterflies from a small pad that I've used. See, I have scraps in here. Look at this. This is the tiniest version of this one. The bug one. I don't know where it went. Here. Look. This is the huge 12 by 12 and then this is the tiny. It's the same page. So I'm just going to go through this real quick and kind of fussy cut out a few pieces. This is just a scrap. That I think I'll be able to collage on here and make a kind of a, a cool looking art journal page. Okay? So that's what we're going to be doing today. We're not going to play with a lot of mediums and um, but we're going to get our background first just by putting some of this melange tissue paper on and adding some color. Or maybe not some color. I'll figure it out. All right. I'll be back with just the pieces that I want to use. All right. I'm back. I decided I want to make my background first. So what I've done is taken a piece of mixed media paper. This is just Strathmore 9 by 12 but it's a nice, uh, this is the 400 series what are, uh, mixed media paper. It's pretty stiff and nice and um, substantial. Cut it in half so that it's a uh, 9 by 6. So I'm going to stick half of it over there. And I'm going to do, I'm going to move this out of the way, but see, I want to do my background first because I'm finding that I'm liking little images, little different bits and pieces and I want to make sure that it's going to look right like I've already cut out like I like this little parcel post this 45 but then I did the big 45 because I wasn't sure so I'm just cutting out bits and pieces of that paper and there's a tiny 45 here that's why I put that in there and I just have it in a bin but I'm going to stop and I'm going to because I really like these leaves so I think I'm going to cut these out. I love, I love the birds too, but I just think, I mean, I, I may use them. I'm just really not sure where I'm going, and that's what I want you to do. Just look through your paper and see if there's something that's catching your eye that's making you feel inspired. That's what, you know, art is all about. And um, I want to use my little cutter bees because I fussy cut better with them. There's a little piece of branch right there. I don't need that. I'm going to cut, uh, sorry, my light is really weird. I have track lighting. And it definitely, I mean, it's not the best. It's definitely good. I think I'll leave this part of the branch. But there are shadows. I do get shadows. So if I'm not in the right position. And I mean, you guys don't need to see me do this. But I'm going to cut out both of these leaves. I love these. These were really what I wanted. Because if I do a colorful background, which I'm not sure yet if I want to do, I can, um, because see, this is what inspired, you know, this is what got my juices flowing to do a plain like this, like this color image for the focal image and do a colorful background. So that was kind of what I was thinking, but I could do the opposite. I could do a plain background, you know, keep it 
kind of monochromatic in the background and then do a colorful image like the birds. So maybe I'll do both ways, you know. I could do one page colorful with a, a monotone focal image and then and I'm not really being specific with this leaf. I, um, I keep calling it leaf. I always get feathers and leaves confused. I always call leaves feathers and feathers leaves. Mostly I call feathers leaves. Anywho, um, I may make two pages and that way you could see what you prefer. But see, I like that, like the idea of putting this on a colorful background. I love, love, love that idea. So that's going in my bucket. Um, but the first thing, I got to clear this out of the way. So I'll put this in my bucket and my birdies in my bucket. And then I'm going to move this out of the way for a minute. And I'm going to use um, probably just Mod Podge, whatever uh, wet glue. See, like, I have bugs in here. OMG, I could really have fun. So that's what it's all about. So these are just, see, like, I could just put this along the side if I wanted to. So I'm going to put that over there. Um, but there's all these bugs. I could just do a bug page. Look at all these bugs. And just really fussy cut out. Or if you guys have um, dyes. Like, I know that there are some dyes that have very intricate foliage or something like that. You could just do it easily that way. I'm going to fussy cut mine out. I'm just going to use this. Uh, I got mad paper here, guys. Hold on. <laughs> I didn't know I put this much out. It's about three. It's probably three different um, paper pads that I just have cut, cut up and used over time. So, um... They're all pulled apart and stuff, so I don't know which one goes with which. And that's not what it's about. I don't want you guys to use what I'm using. I want you to use what you have. And um, think about your paper pads in that way, because a lot of paper pads are designed with repeat images in them. So I think you could do it whatever your um, genre or whatever your... Um, style you know if it's shabby chic because not everybody loves Tim Holtz I happen to I was addicted for a minute not too long because then I just realized I don't need everything I have enough to go with here all right so I don't think I want this big moth so I'm gonna start my page and just have a little piece of a moth I think I like this so I'm gonna take my scissors and just go right here And put this away. Well, I'll put it away in a minute. So I am going to, I want some music, so I'm probably going to pull it up a little. Then I lose a little bit of architecture. I'm going to, I'll get this music. I'd rather have that music and the architecture. So I'm going to go with something like that. I just don't want this big moth. Not on this project. It would not to say it wouldn't look great on another project. So I'll save this piece. And then I'm going to just use Mod Podge. And where's my big glue brush? My scruffy brushes are over here. This is like this probably needs to get thrown away. I'm just going straight to the paper and put a nice coat of this glue all over my page. And because this is tissue paper, um, I'm not, I don't think, I'm, no, I'm not going to, I'm not going to coat the back of the paper. But when you use a stiffer paper, you would want to use uh, glue on the other side of the paper too. 
so you get plenty of adhesion. You want to make sure you're going to get good contact, especially on the edges. So now let me figure out where I want this. I think I wanted this <clears throat> to be... And it doesn't have to be perfectly straight um, because, you know, oh boy, I'm really not having a good, there we go, there we go. <clears throat> I got a little wrinkle, no big deal. And I have like a credit card you can pull your bubbles out with. And make sure that your edges are stuck. So I'm just gonna put a little make sure I think it's good. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> I have a fog. All right. Enough of that. And I could give it I should give it a coat actually on the top. <clears throat> And then set it aside to dry. I like this um, music notes. I'll put that in my stash. Let's coat the top of it. Why not? Then it makes it um, a little bit resistant to... Um, if I were to put paint on here, I could kind of move it around easier too. It gives it a nice coat of protectant seal. It seals it, right? So that's all good stuff. And because I have water in my brush a little bit, it's sliding nicely. And so that'll be good. I'm going to set that aside to dry. I have a fan on, so I'm going to put it over here. Okay. And now I'm going to get back to cutting out some stuff that I'm going to use on my page. So I'm going to cut out these birds because I just think they're cute. And I'll keep them and I'll have them at hand for when I do a different... Um, art journal page okay or maybe like I said I'll do one with a colorful background and one with a monotone background and see which one we like better I'll probably see this is the thing I said that a lot so far I like that I'm just winging this right now and kinda just I got the like I said I was inspired by my my block right here, this guy, and thought, all right, it's time to dig out the Tim Holtz stuff that I've had forever and don't use. So I'm going to cut this out. I'm going to cut out a few more things and I'll be back. Okay. I'm liking where it's going, guys. And see, listen, I didn't know where it was going. So this is what you're going to do. You're going to take, well, now we just have, I'm just going to trim this paper. But you're going to go through your papers, your collage papers, images basically, right? Um, and just find things that you like, that appeal to you, that are size appropriate, that kind of um, play well together color-wise as well. So that your composition will be, you know, 
cohesive, right? And I'll show you what I've come up with, but I think a little crunchy. I like it. I like cutting crunchy paper. I think <clears throat> I'm going to go with, this is so bright and white. I want to dull it down a little bit. I don't think I'm going to do gesso. Um, it depends on how heavy handed I am when I put some paint on here. Because I'm going to put some paint, um, I think, because I want to show you what I did. These are the images that I cut out. I would say they mostly come from the, uh, I just had it here and now I put all my papers down. Um, it is called the Wallflower Stack of Tim Holtz Papers. It's pretty much the Wallflower Stack. So I kind of got flowers and birds and I have my little bird. Oh, she's not coming over. So I cut some foliage, and this is just how it was in the on the pattern paper. So I cut the edge, so I'll stick it there. Got a couple flowers, some eggs, some feathers, but I ended up liking this bird better. First I had, initially I cut these two birds out, but they were a little too colorful. There's blue and green, and I just liked that this was pretty much monochromatic with a little bit of red. Is my light too bright? Let me turn it down a smidge. Sorry, Kiwi. I kind of got her tail. Sorry, Kay. Um, I smushed your tail. I sorry on my chair. So I'm kind of liking this bird. He's more monochromatic. I did cut out this parcel post. It doesn't really have anything to do with birds, but it's red. So I liked that, but then I also really liked just having a number to just be different too, to have a collage, another collage element. And I'm not sure, I, I may overlap that or something, I'm not sure, or I could kind of put it down. I have this piece, which was just on another piece of the paper with the birds I think it was, but I liked it because it had numbers, again, to kind of pull the numbers, and it's similar colors, so maybe I'll put, because I'm not sure if I want this butterfly to show. I may cover it up, but I'm, I'm thinking I'll just put that there. I'm just gonna stack things in such a way that I had this flower, and then these red flowers, which I don't know if I'm gonna use them, but I kind of liked, See, this doesn't really match color-wise, but look, I, so anyway, we'll see how it goes. I liked pulling the color down here. I like to have things in threes. So I have those flowers there, but then I have these big leaves. Oh, see, I did it again. Feathers, and I know they're feathers. So I thought I could cover the butterfly with one of these if I wanted to. I have some eggs. I could cover it with this too. We'll see. I might leave them because I also cut out a few butterflies. So if you have an image on your paper, you can tie it in. So I cut out some butterflies. I could just put, and they're in similar color, or these are even moths, I'm not sure. Up here, put a couple butterflies. So I'm not, I mean, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do yet. The first thing we need to know is, sorry, I was kind of out of the shot. I have more butterfly, uh, fat leaves. What are these? Feathers. They kind of look like leaves too, but I, I'm pretty sure they're feathers, but they might be leaves. Um, but they're very big, so I have some smaller ones. These are the two biggest. Then I got, here's a smaller 45, if I don't like how big this is which I haven't tried the smaller one yet. I kind of like the smaller one. Then I have more room for my butterflies. Um, then I have these little eggs. I have three eggs. Dragon's eggs. Yeah, they're, they're birdie eggs. So I could put them on there. These were just what I mean is that paper line has three different sizes that you can play with. So this is all the same 
pattern just in three different sizes so I thought like I like the color of this I could just put that maybe I'll put the nest part like cut it in half and put the nest and you know so I'm not sure where I'm going I cut the big one out because I wasn't sure if I wanted to use the words it says nests and eggs of familiar birds and um, so I'm not sure where I'm going with those things yet those were just kind of on the side but I think I have enough to work with and I'm really liking it so I'm gonna set all this aside now and work on the background and I think I want to keep it pretty monotone um, let me think 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 I'm going to use a couple of different browns. I'm going to use AC Flesh, just because they're what's here. Burnt Sienna, which may be too dark. And then I'll use my, oops, I have another leaf or feather. My darkest brown on the very edge. This is called Asphaltum. Let's see. I could put a little bit of green. But I think I want to keep it very monotone. I don't think I really want to do this. I might just do these two. I don't want to do this. This is too reddish. I love um, burnt sienna, but I'm going to get, I'm just going to use water and my big angle brush. And I don't even know if this AC flush is really the right color. I just have it out because it's a flush color. I mean, I have it up on my desk because I, um, oh, trail tan might be better. Let's see. Trail tan's kind of cute. I think I like that. I'm going to use that instead. This is more, this is a little more, I like this one better. Um, I could use some pearlescent paint. Let me think. A metallic, maybe some gold. Why not? I think I'm going to pull some gold. And this is just uh, Deco Art Dazzling Metallics Glorious Gold. I'm going to shake these up and I'm going to put the darkest brown all around the edge first and I'm going to do it with uh, by floating. That's the way I like to do it. Do a quick floating lesson. I have, I just have water in this mason jar. I like to keep that on my desk, but really I should be using, if, when I do a painting project again, I'll use my real paint bucket. What do you want to do? You want to watch me? Kiwi's with me. So I go into water. I blot the water out. It's still in the bristles, but it's not drippy. Corner load, and I like to use an angle brush, but that's just a tiny bit of paint on the corner. And then I push the bristles onto my palette. Now this is palette paper, which is like a wax, oh, sh sorry, waxy finish. You can actually use your um, craft mat. And then I'm working the paint into the bristles to get it to be from dark to medium to, to water, basically. And I'm putting a lot of paint on here because I'm going to be doing this slip slappy way. So, but that's how I load my brush. And then I'm just going to go up against the edges. So the color is up against the edge. And I'm not being perfectly, uh, I don't, it doesn't have to be perfect. This is the background. So I'm just putting it on there. Um, whoopsie. And really, when you float, you don't want to go over places you just went. Like that corner, I kind of pulled it off. So I'm just, I'm kind of trying to be messy, actually. But I want to get um, the dark color along the edge. So we're kind of antiquing the edges. And now my brush is really loaded. I, I really didn't. Anywho. And I'm going to rinse it. going to slap a little bit of this trail tan on there and a little bit of the metallic gold wow 
I have the news on in the background and it says category 5 hurricane hitting the Caribbean and Rachel my niece is in where is she um, Jacksonville which is up north very up north and the nuts it's showing it it'll be a category 3 by the time it gets there but oh my gosh these hurricanes what the heck is going on so let's put some of this on here too. I'm just kind of trying to give a little um, antique look to the white. I don't like that it's so bright and white. So that's, oops, ran out of water. You could do this with your ink pads, with your Tim Holtz um, inks. But I just wanted to use a uh, permanent paint. Is paint will not reactivate, so I know when I start gluing my collage papers down, that'll be um, dry and uh, it won't reactivate, and I won't get messes. So, so that looks pretty antiquey, right? I dulled down the white. I still have some, but I like that. And then I'm gonna add some gold. I could spatter with gold, but let me dry a little bit. Sorry, Kiwi. You okay? It's okay. I think I want to add my gold in a different way. Um, I kind of want to stamp it or stencil it on there. Don't we, Curb? I mean, Kiwi, what's your name? What's your name, little, little bird? Uh, what do I have? I have stamps that I could... Uh, Sorry, I wasn't ready. I have some words. I don't like those, actually. Where are my stencils? See, I'm not prepared. All right, I'll be right back. I'm going to find my stencils. All right, I decided to go a little different. I like the color of this, and I will add more of the dark brown after everything's glued down. But I have this stencil, which is kind of a foliage and I'm going to use this. I'm going to use the gold paint and a cosmetic brush, not brush, sponge. And just randomly put some foliage in here. It's not really something that I do a lot. I think I want to turn it over. But I think I want to see what happens. I don't want to get too crazy. But... I want to put some here and there. That's very dark. And this is where my bird's going to go over here. Here and there. And guess what? Gold doesn't isn't a very... Um, you'll only see it... It's not going to be dramatic. It's just going to be subtle. You'll only see it when the page turns or in certain angles, at certain angles. I hope, because I'm not sure. That looks good. Yeah, I love shiny and sparkly, so I'll, the thing is, I'll go crazy and put it everywhere. I just want a little bit right down here. That's good. I want some right here. Right on top of that butterfly. Can you see it? This got really um, thick, but I'm going to put stuff all over it, so I think we're good. I'm just going to let it, I'm going to have to let that dry. And then we can start placing our items 
on here so I also pulled a few stamps because I'll probably stamp on top of everything to push the things so they're not just look like they're sitting right on top um, I kind of want to do some stamping with white under here there really isn't any white but I like to have a pop of white or black um, because once I glue my items down I'm not going to be able to get that on there and I kind of want to do that I think I'm going to use some white paint and listen this is just all kind of I could use no I'm going to use regular white you can use white gesso and I have I either have I'm going to put numbers in white and I'm going to use my brayer and roll it onto here if I can find my brayer here it is so um running out of paint my bird's gonna be there but I'll put it right there it's not the neatest stamping ever but I like it. I like it. I like it. I like it. Okay. It's subtle. It's just in the background. And I think I'm good. But now when I, after I've glued everything down, I can come back and do a little bit of stamping on top to tie it in. I'm not going to do any black stamping. I'm just going to let that black, um, be what it is right now so I'm going to leave these out for later I also have this stamp and I got this on clearance at Michael's one time and it is a it says Janet Dunn design but this is a Tim Holtz stamp come on it's totally a Tim Holtz stamp and I don't know why it says Janet Dunn uh, okay so this just has to dry and then I'm gonna adhere and I'm gonna use Mod Podge you can use matte medium, you can use just glue, regular um, quick dry adhesive or whatever type of glue you like. But I'm going to use um, I'm going to use Mod Podge. Sorry. Just going to move this out of the way. And clean myself up a little bit let, while that dries alright I'm gonna go away and dry it and I'll be back and we'll be glowing alright I'm just gonna go for it I think I know where I'm going with it and I've been playing around with positioning and I, I gotta go for it um, this is gonna be a little tricky because it's a little flimsy so I'm gonna do my best not to rip it but try to get it as gluey as possible on the main sections and then I'll give it a final coat at the end I'll cover up everything but hopefully and I like to use my tweezers to, to place things and I'm just gonna put it up against the edge just above the but der just above the butterfly I'm not sure if I'm keeping that butterfly like if or if I'm going to cover it with something. But we will play that by ear as we go. That looks good. Put a little coat over it. Um 
I think I'm going to put my bird like right in the middle after. He's going to be on top of everything. So at the top, the very top, I'm going to put this piece in the corner. Let's see if I can get these to work this time. And just kind of... Actually, I'm going to pull it down a little because I think I want to put that parcel post. So I'm going to put this, 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 something like that. So you don't really see it very much, but I think I'm going to do that. But then did I want to put a butter? I might put a butterfly, so I wanted to leave enough room. I think I can do it. Mm. I have plenty on my brush. Maybe even over a little, but then if I put the butterfly, I don't really want to cover it. I think I'm going to put the butterfly. I'm going to put the butterfly first. You okay, Kay? That's my birdie. Do you want to go potty? What are you doing? She's okay. Alright, so then, see I like the butterfly. Now I might be able to keep the butterfly. Let me look. Um, I kind of like this being here now. But the only thing is I don't really love that that's just like hanging like that. So I was thinking I was going to put one of these le Ugh, what are they? Feathers. I could put, no, I wanted to put it like either in the middle. Because my bird is going to go here. So this is going to be the most empty spot over here because nothing's going to be butt up against that. Um, I have trust. I have a couple words. Trust, play, and bliss. And I think I want to go with trust. I could put that right there. It would kind of cover the butterfly. Um, what else? Because see, I have these eggs and I had this flower if I want to cover the butterfly I was thinking of doing that I really kind of want to put these do remind me of leaves more than feathers I think these are reminding me of leaves and maybe I'll just put them on top of the butterfly and put trust and then I'll put these kind of coming from over here. 
for the red and maybe we'll call it done I had this little feather this actually just came out of Kiwi when she was preening so I could kind of stick that in here somewhere I don't know where maybe underneath trust like right there because this is bright green maybe up here with the little birdies tail I don't know um, but I think this is all I'm gonna do I'm going to have to decide about this there's really nothing black down here either except for this writing so something makes me want to put a big butterfly on top of that butterfly but I don't know if that would be appropriate like something like that and then put trust Still, this is so black. I feel like I want something else that's just as black. So maybe I'll have to stamp something. Anywho, um, kind of liking this. It looks a little naked. Like I could put the eggs instead of the butterfly. I could put eggs here. These three eggs kind of overlapping each other and then just put trust. Can't really tell their eggs if I do that. And then it seems like I need red. I only have these two. I have this. This is too similar in color. That's why I like that. And I like this, too. I like the smaller one. I think I'm going to do that. And... This green is so bright. This is like the brightest thing on the page. I could just cut this flower out and stick them in here with um, just these leaves down here maybe. Maybe that would look better because the green is so bright. So if I just stick that in with like some of these. But this was green, but I covered a lot of it up. And this is green, but it's not as bright as this green, you know? Oh my goodness. Decisions, decisions, decisions. I like it. I like the bright green. I think I want to put it over here, though. Maybe just one flower. I could put a like a thing across the bottom. Where did I put that um that 
border. I don't know where I put it. It's in a pile somewhere. But like if I put a little something on the bottom. All right, I think I love the top and I love this. I just have to figure this out and I'm kind of liking this. I could cover up some of the green with this and I'm liking that and then maybe just put him here put the big guy here right on top of him I just don't like that um, I cannot make decisions. Um, I like that better. And maybe I'll put trust over here on top of an egg. I like that. That's what I'm doing. I like the butterfly and the butterfly. And then there's part of a butterfly with like an egg in the middle and it's green. I think that's good. I don't, I, I think I'm going to go with this. One other thing I could do is this little, instead of the egg, just do a leaf. Um, I had a bigger leaf. I like the egg. The green egg. All right. I think it's a done deal. All right, so I'm going to glue that on, and I'll be back and show you the last step. Okay, so here's where we're going to finish it off, and I'm going to, let's, this paint probably didn't dry up. I have a big puddle of the darkest brown. Mine's asphaltum. Yeah, I have plenty. And I'm going to side load again, and it's a little dry, so I'm just adding more water. And this is a technique that I learned doing decorative painting, but I've seen lots of uh, art journalers use their big brushes and do the same thing. But I'm just going to go around the bird and set him into the background. And go around a lot of the stuff to get it to be part of the piece rather than just sitting on top of the piece. And that Mod Podge is kind of shiny and has a little bit of a, a slickness to it, so I can just do this really quickly and without much resistance. Um, we like that. Let's go around this trust. make sure that stands out I mean I could absolutely go around each and every thing but I don't want to put too much darkness on here so I'm just gonna kinda pick and choose a couple things I think oops I'm grabbing my mop kiwi she just jumped back up on my shoulder um, I think I want to do something up there let's see I mean, you can just go around everything, but I think I want to go, oops, I forgot I had white on my palette. It's all dried up, but I, wait, I'll move over here. I used my briar on that white, and it got, um, I think I'm going to go around this butterfly right here and just make him kind of show up a little bit. I like that. And then I'll go around this butterfly. I 
the butterfly kind of came in handy. I really liked the color in the composition. I wanted to add it. And so see, I'll dull down that flower a little. That's okay. Because I kind of want my bird to be the main um, thing. I guess I'll go around the, just underneath, because this seems really bright right here. So I'm, oops. I'm just going to go around this right here just to kind of add a little darkness in general. There. I think that looks good. Um, you could take your um, pens and detail pens and all that and outline things. I'm not going to do that. Um, I kind of want to stamp on top a little bit, a little bit of stamping, like with numbers and maybe not numbers, something subtle. But I don't have to. I could just use a gold pen. I have my gold. Um, I have pencils in that one. I should have a gold uniball, and I don't see it. I have a gold Sharpie. Because uh, I thought, because I did use gold as an accent, I could, you know what else I was thinking of doing? Like brightening up his eye with a little, just a little dot, like bring them to life. Um, I was going to staple on the feather, which now I don't know, here it is. I think I might staple this feather on right on top of the tail to just bring the green. And I, because it's Kiwi's feather, I think I'm going to do that. But like you could, um, let me put a border. It's like a, a extra large ATC. That's what I feel like this kind of turned out like. And I mean, you could just doodle to your heart's content, but I don't really want to do that. I was going to outline a few things with my gold. I don't know where it is. My gold. Um, Oh, Kiwi, where did we put it? Where did we put it, Kiwi? I know, in here. I think I know, yep. So I was just, I was thinking I could go around a couple things with this gold, but I don't really know if I want to. I don't know. I'm tempted, I'm tempted. Let's see. We have to write August. It's not even coming out. Um, there should be plenty in here. You know what? It was probably upside down. But I should write August on here. I think I want to go around something with this gold. It's not working. This is my Jelly Roll Metallic Gold. So here's where you could just go crazy adding details and um, And really, it's just 
your personal preference and I don't think this is dry enough yet jelly rolls go on pretty good over um, mixed media but I don't think it's dry enough so I need to give it a chance to dry but that's it yay we got August done let me staple on this feather I'm gonna use my little Tim Holtz tiny attacher I have it and I never use it I do actually I just use this as a stapler whenever I I think I'm just gonna put it like I don't know should we put it on his arm it would look kind of cute on his arm I think it looks cute there I think I just wanted to put it kind of by his tail though I think I'm gonna put it on his tail ta-da all right you guys so that is our August art journal page I hope you had fun I did so I'll get this posted and we got to get September too now. It's already September like 6th, I think. So I have to start thinking about that. All right, you guys. Thanks for watching.